<laughs> like, uh, oh, well, hello. <laughs> Thank you for hopping into the conversation. <laughs> oh, we're oh. live. <laughs> All right. Hello, viewers. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to Berkeley Rep's Creative Careers, How to Apply Regional Theater Fellowships and Internships. My name is Michael Curry. I'm the current education fellow here at Berkeley Repertory Theater. And before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsors of the Creative Careers Program, American Express and Bay Tree Fund. Thank you for your sponsorship. Now, to get us started, I have a panel of lovely fellows from four different regional theaters around the country. And I'm going to have them introduce themselves, say what fellowship that they're currently doing and what theater they're working with. So to get us started, I'm going to pass it off to Tiana. Hello, my name is Tiana Bias, and I am the Management Fellow at Arena Stage in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Tiana. Molly? Of course. Hi, everyone. My name is Molly Archambault. I'm the Arts Administration Apprentice at Hartford Stage. Thank you. Lena? My name is Lena Muir. I'm the Young Conservatory and Studio ACT Fellow at the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco. And I'm Ankita Raduri. I'm the Literary and Dramaturgy Fellow here at Berkeley Repertory Theater. All right. Well, thank you all again for being here with us today. Uh, I want to pass the first question off to Molly, actually. So, Molly, can you tell our viewers what a typical day looks like for you at your fellowship at Hartford Stage? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as the Arts Administration Apprentice, a huge part of my day is just sitting at the front desk and kind of maintaining the general office atmosphere. Um, but in addition to that, I, my day could consist of drafting contracts for incoming artists, prepping paperwork for them as soon as they get in here, um, drafting season calendars for our next season. Um, oh, gosh, sitting in a board meeting and taking minutes and any other various tasks that might get assigned to me. Just kind of juggling everything. <laughs> Doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. A little bit of everything. That's kind of the best, I think. <laughs> I see. I see. Tiana, I'd like to ask you the same question. What does a typical day look like at Arena Stage for you? Of course. So a typical day for me is very similar to Molly, just kind of doing whatever, whenever it's needed. Um, I work a lot with our board members, so prepping materials for um, subcommittee meetings or board meetings. Um, I also work closely with our executive director and our artistic director, so any special projects that come up that they need for me to do, and that can vary from day to day, hour to hour. That can be anything from updating budget materials or metrics for um, archival purposes or finding producers for a specific stage reading that either one of them is interested in or is trying to put on. It really can, it changes a lot from day to day, which is very exciting, so. So it keeps things fresh, you know, something different every day, nothing. Exactly, Never the same. Yes. That's awesome. And I want to pass it over here to Lena. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit <laughs> my program since I have a pretty long title and it is um, unique to ACT. Oh. Um, the, I'm a conservatory fellow and the two programs that I work with are the Young Conservatory, which is our K through 12 educational program, um, and Studio ACT, which is our continuing, continuing education program for adults. Um, and so I'm handling class registration, I'm talking to parents and students, um, making sure that everything is set with the teachers and the students and the studios that they're working in for just general day-to-day -day management of those classes, um, as well as working with the rest of the conservatory um, and the MFA programs to see if they need any assistance. Cool, cool. And Ankita, finally, here at Berkeley Rep, <laughs> what does the day look like for you? Here at Berkeley Rep, well, my fellowship kind of sits down the line, so it's a literary slash dramaturgy fellowship, mm -hmm. and um, that could mean that I'm in rehearsal. So for It Can't Happen Here, which we did in the fall, I was just a supervisor for that show. So I was in rehearsal all the time, uh, tracking script changes because that was a like a brand new play. Mm -hmm. um, but then also sometimes I might be in our offices and those days are, you know, doing script coverage for play, uh, play submissions from agents that we get or um, uh, 
planning for our ground floor programs, which are all of our new play development programs. Uh, so one of the big things that uh, my fellowship does, the person in my fellowship does, is read and evaluate applications for the ground floor summer residencies that I belong with the rest of the artistic staff. Mm -hmm. um, and then that happens in the summer. And then when that happens, my fellowship will shift gears to being a facilitator for that program, for the summer residency that I have. Oh, nice. So it kind of depends on what's going on mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it, it varies by what exactly what program is going on at the yeah, moment yeah 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 and then like there's obviously a lot of like management of the literary department that happens like um just upkeeping our scripts databases and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then i also contribute to program writing um but it really does depend on what's going on at that moment in the season nice so it yeah. sounds like across the board we have it a very shifting environment like <laughs> daily you know you don't know what you're going to get into the next day so it keeps yeah. things exciting and fresh that's cool yeah. lena i want to ask you um what professional development opportunities does act offer its fellows as far as maybe like workshops or meetings they may have with artists for you to connect how do they help you professionally develop in your yeah. career I mean, personally for me, I have a great mentor. Um, each fellow is put into a department and they have a supervisor or mentor who helps them do day-to-day -day stuff and checks in with them every month, um, makes sure that everything that they are wanting to get out of their fellowship, um, there's something for them there. So if they uh, wanna meet with other departments, if they wanna meet with other supervisors to see you know, what it's like um, in their department, um, so there's that kind of personal mentorship. And then our coordinators also host meetings, um, maybe once or twice a month, just to check in with us and then to also arrange on a bigger scale, um, aside from one-on-ones with other departments, with other people in departments, um, seminars with the supervisors, with the general managers, um, people like that, so that they can host little talks with the fellows and just kind of keep them up to date with what's going on mm -hmm. in the theater as well as asking them questions you know like what do you want to get out of this and how can I help you yeah awesome Agata uh, what about here at Berkeley Rep what opportunities do they offer to our fellows um well we have our monthly fellow meetings mm -hmm. um and so we've had an opportunity to meet with most of our department heads so if we're, we have an interest in like a different department or um interest in like what that department does for the life of the theater we can you know communicate with them uh we also have mentors our uh, mentors take a huge have mm -hmm. a huge role in kind of helping us make sure again we're getting everything out of our fellowship but also like my mentor um has been connecting me with people in the bay area to make sure that i'm um setting up coffee dates with those people to see like what i want to do next or like how that's going to develop when we had our kind of like mid-season check-in um she asked me you know like what I wanted to do next and we talked about like what I could be doing now and how I could be using my resources here at Berkeley Rep to kind of advance myself beyond this fellowship right wow. now so that was really um really great really welcome um we also I mean like from time to time we'll have some kind of workshop um for like a resume or like something like that mm. that it, depending on what you want and what's great is that you can always ask like if there's something that you're interested in you can say like I'm interested in this like is there something we can do around that mm -hmm. and usually um usually Anthony's really great about um making something happen so yeah nice <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he is shout out to Anthony <laughs> holding it down behind props the live stream as well so Tiana what about at arena stage what professional development opportunities do they offer your fellows of course so we have our once or twice a month, we do have a meet meetings with our program manager. That's an opportunity for all of the fellows to get together. And then we usually also get to sit down with a, a head of one of the departments here at ARENA. So it's very much we get a sense of what each department does and just a conversation about where that person is in their career and how they got to where they are. So that's, that's professional development that we have. And then our program manager is fabulous about asking us about what our next steps are, you know, where we want to go from, where we want to go from our fellowship. And he's really great about connecting us with people in the community and trying to give us those contacts that will um, help us post fellowship. Nice, nice. And Molly, how about at Hartford stage? 
Sure. Um, like many of you, we also have a bunch of seminars and um, meetings periodically, both to learn about different departments and the work that everyone's doing in them um, and about our season as a whole, and also more specific target to resume building for future steps, et cetera. Um, my supervisor has also been wonderful at just um, highlighting to me what might be some next steps that I could take and some things that I hadn't even thought about before. So that's wonderful. We also have a networking day every March um, where they bring us into New York for a day and set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with people we might be interested in, positions we might be interested in throughout the city to give us a chance to just kind of pick brains outside of our own company as well. Nice. So all these companies are pushing towards connecting you with people in your area to really expand your horizons for after the fellowship. That's great to hear. Now, as we spoke about before uh, we began the live stream, a lot of the a lot of our fellowships began midsummer and usually end around the same time. So we're halfway through. For most of us, we're halfway through or almost finishing. And I'd like to know uh, what has been the coolest experience that you've had so far in your fellowship? Something that surprised you, something that's just been like, this is really awesome. And anybody could start that off. Yeah. Um, I know, I know. It's like <laughs> there have been a lot of really cool moments. Um, I know I'm having a hard time thinking of mine, too, because yeah. there have been a lot of moments. Yeah. Um, the one that's coming in my mind right now is we're working on a workshop right now mm -hmm. of a new play. And um, I've been at theaters before that have been workshopping new plays, but as the like particular fellowship that I have, I've for the first time kind of been able to just sit in on a process that is brand new and um, kind of developing in the moment. And I've been on new play processes before that are going to production, like I said before, but this play is in, um, in a stage where like entire acts of it could change overnight and new songs could get added like that you didn't know about 10 a.m. that have been mm -hmm. added at 2 p.m., you know, and being in that like fast paced environment of like, okay, we've created a space for um, this play to kind of like find itself. Mm -hmm. uh, that is really, really an exciting thing to just observe and like contribute to however I can. I've been like trying to provide research as a dramaturg mm -hmm. when where possible, but like mostly I'm just there for the ride, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, this is going to switch up at any moment. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. It's, yeah. It's been very exciting. Yeah. How about you? Sure. Um, we're currently in the midst of our fellowship project. So essentially, uh, any of the fellows that are interested are coming together, and we are given the resources and the support from the institution to produce um, any play that we want. Um, so it could be devised, and it could be what we're doing is we are producing Orlando. Um, and we just announced that, so it's very exciting. <laughs> uh, so we're producing it. We're fundraising for it. Um, our crew is made up of local artists and ourselves. We actually, I think, have a couple of the Berkeley Rep Fellows um, joining us, yeah. too. Ooh, ooh. So <laughs> we're networking and we're making connections and, you know, we're creating art that is important to us. Um, and ACT is giving us the space and the support from, you know, our, our managers and our supervisors to put this on so that we have this experience of producing a play at ACT. Um, aside from that, uh, personally, I am really passionate about mentorship and uh, working with young artists. So something about my fellowship that's been really important to me has been getting to know a lot of the students mm -hmm. that come through our conservatory. Um, a lot of our young artists of color come in through and like I'm able to be there for them and give mm -hmm. them the support that they need um, in, you know, in middle school or in uh, junior high, that's the same thing, in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on where you're at, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that has been really special for me, to be able to be a part yeah. of that and um, provide opportunity for young artists like me. Yeah. That's nice. That's nice. Molly, how about sure. for you? Um, I, the way that this apprenticeship has been structured, at least in my eyes, and I'm not sure about the rest of you, is I've definitely seen it as the first couple months are still, you know, you're settling in, you're learning, you're expected to ask questions, you're whatever. Um, and now that we've kind of crossed that halfway point, it's really about taking initiative and um, 
you know, acting on your own, which is really cool to kind of feel that shift happen organically. Mm. And so I feel like it's not necessarily a moment, but more of a, a trajectory. And now that there's a point where I feel like I've been given more responsibility and more, um, oh gosh, what's the word? Projects outside of just this company. So for example, just last week, I was working on writing testimony for a state public budget hearing um, for us to present. So it was exciting to kind of have that extra step and extra project outside of just our walls too. Yeah, great. And Tiana, what about at Arena Stage? So consistently, the most exciting thing for me is the opportunity to sit in on senior staff meetings at Arena. Um, I A big reason why I wanted to do this fellowship was I just kind of wanted to see how the machine worked. I wanted to get a real sense of how decisions are made in the nonprofit theater sector. So just being able to see the heads of the department really sit down and figure out, be it season planning or an HR issue that comes up, just really how how all of that then gets funneled down through the organization. So that's always really the highlight of my week. Any Tuesday or Thursday, I'm so excited because it's a senior <laughs> staff meeting. So <laughs> That's awesome, being able to soak in all that knowledge that you can, right? Exactly, yes. Oh, yes. Anka, so you thought of a better one. I thought of a better one. I should never speak first. Um, when we got in our applications for the Ground Force Summer Residency Lab, there's uh -huh. like – Hundreds. I think we got the most ever this year. There are like 600 applications. And these are applications for projects that artists want to work on and like that are like brand new projects that they mm -hmm. want to work on. Um, so whatever they're thinking about, whatever they're passionate about that moment. Um, and so to read all of these applications, you kind of get a pulse of like what's happening beneath the surface of the theater. Mm -hmm. And like that's really cool to observe is like, okay, mm -hmm. in like two or three years, these are the things that are going to be on the artistic consciousness. Right, this like is have the that trend. kind of like, look, yeah, this is where we'll things see. are trending. Um, that was actually really, really cool. Yeah, so you get an insight into people's minds. Like, okay, yeah. this is where we're going to be at. This is where we're going to be. And like, this is what the landscape might look like. Mm -hmm. Or this is this like 30 projects that are in some way dealing with this one thing um, that no theater right now is dealing with. Mm -hmm this is what we're going to be dealing with soon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I um, I actually thought of a moment myself that's been pretty cool. Was, uh, earlier on, we were able to collaborate with ACT, actually, on the Every 28 Hours yes. project and uh, seeing how all of the regional theaters came together and just that process mm -hmm. of, like, trying to put on this show with this important message just – that was really awesome for me to be a part of that and just see that whole process come to life and yeah. – see the production come to be so yeah. yeah this it's been great experiences um i'd like to ask you all about your blending your personal um goals mm -hmm. with the work of your fellowship because i know a lot of people come into these fellowships with goals to be artists to be um directors actors um even writers and mm -hmm. even those that are in administration just how do you balance your personal goals with the workload of the fellowship or have you found the balance or are you still you know because it's there, there's not one answer for this you know <laughs> everybody's on their journey so if i could go ahead and go answer ahead, Tiana, um, go ahead. i kind of find them one and the same um, mm -hmm. I think that this opportunity to be a fellow and to observe how the organization is working, um, it feeds into me deciding what I do want to do post-fellowship. So I consistently, while I'm at my desk, while I am working on arena-specific things, I'm also always thinking, oh, well, this is maybe something I can take and try to apply to a project that I'm doing personally, or this is maybe this is a person that I could try to contact for something that I'm interested in doing. So I kind of think of think of them as one of as one of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a writer. I'm a playwright mm -hmm. and also a dramaturg. And um, part of the reason I thought this fellowship would be so useful is because like I've been immersed in new work, and so I've been. It's like it's like a masterclass for me. Mm -hmm. Um, observing playwrights and dramaturgs, you know, doing what they do on a prof on this like professional level. Um, so it kind of gives me a like a vision for like where I could where I could end up or like mm -hmm. where I might want to end up 
Um, simultaneously, I've been trying to, I mean, it is hard to, in terms of the craft itself, have mm-hmm. time to write or develop your work at the same time as a fellowship. That mm-hmm. is a bit of a trade off. But, yeah. um, but I think ultimately it's preparing me for, for taking that step. And um, the connections I'm building here and the ethic I'm building here is mm-hmm. going to serve me as I go back to that after mm-hmm. the fellowship. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm still writing. I don't have as much time to develop work with collaborators mm-hmm. while I'm doing this like full-time thing. Um, but everything that I'm doing here is informing that craft. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I feel similarly. Um, where I think a lot of my personal goals are being like narrowed down or s- becoming more specific because of uh, the work that I'm doing at my fellowship and the people that I'm interacting with. Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm trying to stretch my writing muscles too. And uh, one of my supervisors is a playwright. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, like we'll work together and then at the same time, you know, on lunch breaks or whatever, we'll talk about her plays and I'll become inspired mm-hmm. um, to continue, you know, my own personal work. Um, as well as in my professional career, I know that, you know, I want to stay within the field of education, but I don't know what that means yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even what I'm going to do after this fellowship, I'm not 100% sure um, the specific place or or specific job that I want to go to. Um, but the people that I'm talking to, I'm getting to see what their trajectory has been like. Um, and I'm getting to see what's possible within the realm of theater because people have jobs that I would never have even imagined existing (laughs) within (laughs) theater. Um, and they take full ownership of those jobs and I'm like, that is something that I'm interested in and maybe Mm -hmm. that's something I can create at another theater, um, something that I can do. So I think that's been really, really great to see at my fellowship. Yeah. For sure. Molly, would you like to add anything? Uh, Sure. So I think, yeah, similarly, when I, before I started this, my life up until this point has been kind of consistently a mix of my creative work and administrative work. Mm -hmm. And so for this year, I really wanted to just devote myself to admin and see what I thought about it and what um, I liked, what I didn't like, just to have that experience to not be split. Mm -hmm. And it's been super informative. So I've really taken this year to just Um, take every opportunity that's been given to me to put myself out there in this world. Um, And like Lena, I'm not 100% sure what the next steps are, but if nothing else, it's super great information for me for how much of each of those pieces I need in my life. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. So, Ankita, I want to address this question to you first. Mm -hmm. Um, you can take some time to think about it. Just, uh, (laughs) 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 so, uh, why do you feel uh, young artists or career-changing artists uh, should apply to a fellowship? Really Just good question. <laughs> um, of course, this is how you feel. Why? Why you think they should? I mean, there are there are a lot of really good reasons, and it kind of depends, definitely, on like what's right for you mm-hmm. at the moment that you're in in your life. But um, I can say, I mean, for me. Personally, I um, I graduated from college and then I got a job at a theater company doing um, something administrative, which for me personally wasn't what, what I wanted to be doing in the long run. It was mm-hmm. kind of like I wanted to have a full-time job and pay my bills and also stay connected to a theater that I really loved. Mm-hmm. And so this was kind of a compromise for me. But um, after like a year, year and a half of doing that, um, the work wasn't what I was interested in. So I started doing other things at that theater that were more like I started reading scripts for their literary department because that's mm-hmm. what I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I loved everyone at that theater. Um, it's just the specific work I was doing wasn't wasn't it. And so like in order to kind of shift into a more literary dramaturgy world, mm-hmm. um, a fellowship was a really good opportunity to um, like leverage what skills I had, build this other um, repertoire of, mm. of abilities, of skills, of experience, um, and then also use that opportunity to, to launch into the next phase. Fellowships are, I think, a really good stepping stone. They're a really good jumping point, mm-hmm. and you can kind of like take them in any direction um, afterwards. Um, but they can really help you to, I guess, like, like we've been saying, like, focus in on, like, what your goals are, mm-hmm. um, 
and shift towards the path that you're more interested in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's the perfect way to say it. A step, I think <laughs> stepping stone is the perfect way to think about it. Uh, Tiana, if I could address the same question to you, why do you feel people should apply for fellowships? Of course. Well, I mean, it really is just the, the hands-on experience. Um, the hands-on experience and being able to learn, have a set of skills and learn a new set of skills that you can then apply in however you see fit post-fellowship. Um, I think another important thing to consider is also just developing a network of contacts. Mm -hmm. If you know that this is the world that you want to be in and you know that this is for the most part um, <laughs> where <laughs> where you are going to, the direction you're going to end up going, I think taking this opportunity to perfect the skills that you have, build on the skills that you have, and just to find and get your network, be that your fellow fellows or people that you get introduced to in your theater scene, I think that that's also a really important factor in applying for a fellowship. Definitely, definitely. Molly, why do you feel? Yeah, I, I've approached this year as an extension of my education, and I think that's been wonder. It's been wonderful for me just to gain experience, like you all said, hands-on, um, and knowing that it's so transferable. And even if I'm not, like, regardless of where I end up next, whatever I learned this year will be incredibly beneficial. Okay, Tiana. Um, this is actually my second fellowship. Post-grad, I was um, an audience relations intern at another theater, Center Stage Baltimore, uh, where I met Tiana. <laughs> and <laughs> Um, and I think that these fellowships have been so beneficial for me in the way that I, my, my past internship, I had no experience in the box office or as a house manager, like none whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And they still hired me because they saw that I was very passionate about theater and about learning and about educating myself. And I think that's the most important part of being a fellow and owning this fellowship is that you have to be here and you're willing to learn because they give so many educational opportunities. I would definitely not be the theater artist that I am, that I am today mm -hmm. if not for these experiences, just because I've gotten the chance to see kind of from every single department how everyone collaborates together, how the theater cannot run um, without every single department, mm -hmm. without box office, graphics, marketing, um, artistic, all of us working together, there's no way that that's going to happen. And sometimes, you know, you, you just stick in a department and you're kind of just surrounded by that world. Um, it's hard to see what everyone else in the theater is doing. This fellowship, th these fellowships are really good for, you know, helping you see how the whole machine works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it's showing that the collaboration goes beyond the stage exactly. onto <laughs> the administration yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> Theater all around is just collaborative. Yeah. <laughs> so posing this question to you all, uh, three tips that you've taken from your fellowship or apprenticeship so far that you would pass on. And again, take your time. Whoever, uh, whenever you're ready, just tips for theater makers or for applicants to fellowships for applicants to fellowships okay cool <laughs> <laughs> sorry thank you no, for no, clarifying no. that yeah. yeah so tips that <laughs> Could you I give chime to in? yeah yeah go ahead Molly. okay so i would say um ask questions put yourself out there and say yes and take every opportunity that comes to you those are good accurate yeah. quotes I guess in that same um, <laughs> aim, just being aggressively open and aggressively seeking opportunity, um, just being able to take whatever comes to you and be able, being able to latch on to any project that may present itself. Um, also, this idea of sort of blooming where you're planted. Mm -hmm. If you're having a rough day in your fellowship, that is fine. You have to figure out how to make it work and how to still do your best work no matter what while you are being open to any opportunity that presents itself to you. And then I also think just, I think it's important to just be yourself, um, be that in your actual position, in your application, to just, the organization also wants to know who you are, you know? So um, I think that that's also equally as important. Mm -hmm. 
I think on that note of like the organization wants to know who you are like I would put your opinions on the table and like your thoughts on the table I mean when that opportunity arises when it's appropriate but um your input is not you know it's it's wanted Mm -hmm. you're Mm -hmm. here you're not just here to you're here to learn and you're here to contribute and um I, I think that yeah I think that we have input that is valuable Mm -hmm. um and that's why we're in these fellowships that we're in and so it's important to remember that yeah i agree i've been told numerous times um by the supervisors that we're here for that reason um that we offer that fresh perspective for programs that maybe may have been around for so long that they need to stay updated Mm -hmm. you know it's 2017 we need to make sure that um you know us coming up from college or wherever we're coming from there are some people that are uh a little past graduation <laughs> that are here <laughs> <Yeah. right now. laughs> maybe ch- changing their careers um they want to get that fresh perspective from all of us yeah so that they can stay a strong theater in this world that we live in today for sure <laughs> i agree with all those especially uh you know being inquisitive mm-hmm. and asking all this question because we're kind of in a interesting position as fellows and apprentices where it's kind of unrestricted access to everything in the theater (laughs) so you can dip into a rehearsal and ask a director on the side like hey you know what's going on tell me about yourself or you can stop in the uh, managing director's office be like tell me what you do you know (laughs) so having that unrestricted access to ask all these questions and get as much knowledge as you can is just a beautiful opportunity um and Asking questions, speaking of asking questions and people who are thinking about applying, can you speak to the application process for your theater, Mm -hmm. uh, for your internship, and um, yeah, how does one go about applying for a fellowship at your theater? I guess we'll start here and work our way around. Sure, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, um, so at Berkeley Rep, there's an application process online. Mm. Um, for the literary and the directing fellowships, there's also a like written component um, for the directing fellowship as well. I'm not 100% sure. I'm, for my fellowship, mm. there de- I should only talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> for my fellowship, there was a written component, so um, I had to submit writing samples mm-hmm. that were either like program essays or script reports or like something that reflected the kind of writing that I'd be doing in the fellowship Mm -hmm. um and then there's obvious there's a cover letter you can talk about why you're interested in the fellowship or like what um what you're hoping to get out of it um and like why that theater specifically why this theater specifically um and there was a resume component Mm -hmm. um and then like yeah basic information um so yeah, it was pretty straight. Oh, and I needed uh, three letters of recommendation. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, those came from like my mentors during college, or um, I had a previous internship, someone saying that I wrote me a recommendation, um, like a summer internship during college, mm-hmm. um, and just like stuff like previous mentors that wrote their recommendations for my application. Nice. And was there an um, interview? Or yes, there was an interview. <laughs> 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 yes, there was. Uh, my interview was over the phone. Um, because I was in New York at the time, mm-hmm. and so, um, so yeah, there was the application, and then I got an email being like, "Do you want to interview you?" Um, had the interview, and then there was like a little bit of waiting, mm-hmm. and, then, and then, yeah, and then an offer. Got out. Yeah. Nice, and I think uh, also for Berkeley Web for some of the uh, production ones such as Scenic Art, uh, mm-hmm. Lighting, you can. And I'm not sure about sound. You can submit your portfolio, yeah. mm-hmm. your work, yeah. and uh, yeah, they can see what you're doing. Yeah, or like if you have a website or something yeah. like that, you can point to that as well, and and that just helps people like know more about right. this is what about I what do. you do and this like yeah, and why you might be a good look fit. at my work. Yeah, hire me. <laughs> <laughs> but how about at ACT? Yeah, similar basic components: uh, mm-hmm. resume, cover cover letter, personal statement, uh, three letters of recommendation. Um, also online, so. Most of these, you go to the website of the theater, and they'll have them available. Um, And then portfolios and writing samples, as appropriate. Mm -hmm. Um, My one big recommendation for resumes, I learned at our resume workshop (laughs) at ACT. 
so, so, so lovely. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that theater is about storytelling. So you use this opportunity to tell your story through your resume, your cover letter, and your personal statements in varying degrees of you know how much detail you want to put into each one. Um, but this is your chance to shine and really tell them you know who you are, where you're coming from, and what you want to do, and what you can contribute to this theater. Um, following up with that, there was also an interview. I think I had two Skype interviews with my personal supervisor, who's the um, conservatory associate. So I had that with the associates and then with the directors following up with that mm -hmm. just to see if they would like me and wanted to work with me. <laughs> so I think that's, that's what the interviews are for. They want to see that if you know, you're somebody that meshes well with the theater. Mm -hmm. um, you tell them what you can give, and you also tell them what you want to receive from the fellowship. So there has to be like a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. Yeah. They're learning from you. You're learning from them. Mm -hmm. Molly, how about at Hartford Stage? Similar process, and again, it's all listed online too. Um, we require a cover letter, a resume, and three references, and then a few of the apprenticeship pro or positions also need writing samples as well. Um, and all of those resumes are read by one person first and then from that are filtered down throughout the rest of the organization and the different departments. Um, and there is an interview component as well. Mine was over the phone. Um, I think most people's were. And yeah, but going off of that, just do research beforehand. Look at the mission statement of the theaters. Um, look at what their programs are, what their initiatives are mm -hmm. that make them unique um, and speak to that because that makes a big difference. Sure, for sure. Tiana, um, how about you? How about everyone? Of course, so um, similar to everyone else, you have the online application, your cover letter, your resume, you need three references, um, writing samples and a portfolio, depending on which department you're applying for. Um, Arena does also ask for a diversity statement. Mm -hmm. So just a quick paragraph about your personal commitment to diversity, equity, parity, um, personally. Um, I just, as far as your application, I do think it's important to make sure that you are reflecting who you are through your application, similar to what Lena was saying. You want to tell your personal story. Um, I think it's also important to make sure you look at the mission statement and make sure that you have questions. Make sure that there, if there's something that sticks out to you, something that you want to know more about, feel free to ask that because I think that says a lot that you, one, you did your research and that you're, that this is a company that you're really interested in. I second that. Yeah. Yeah. Just coming in the room as well informed as you can be yeah. and being as prepared as you can. That's real. And inquisitive. I mean, for yeah. me, my uh, my interview was with Madeline Oldham, who is the director of our new development programs. And like, I just had questions for her as a person. Yeah. Like, I, like <laughs> if I didn't get a chance to talk to her again, like I wanted to know things about what she did mm -hmm. in that moment. And I think that that allowed us also to just have a easy conversation that made yeah. it less stressful as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Just being genuinely interested. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. be be interested. <laughs> That's what it is. Because you're giving your time up for, you're giving your time a year for this theater. You want to make sure that they're doing what's exciting for you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you said, it's a learning experience for both. So yeah. you're supposed to gain something from them, to gain something from you. <laughs> now, I want to finally ask you all, going into the next phase mm -hmm. of your life, how do you feel your fellowship has prepared you for that? And even if you don't know, what, how is it informed? How to, I mean, it's an experience to go through the fellowship and learn that, hey, maybe this isn't what I want to do. Or, you know, you always gain something better of yourself at the end. So how do you feel it's prepared you for the next phase? The next thing that I'm personally doing, and that mm -hmm. might happen here in the Bay Area or might happen in New York, is I'm gonna get a part-time job to pay my bills, and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna write <laughs> and I'm gonna produce and I'm yeah. gonna, uh, you know, workshop my own stuff. Yeah. And I'm um, I'm really excited about that. I'm really terrified about that. I'm prepared for it though because of conversations that I've had with people here. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. from playwrights that I've talked to while they've been here developing their shows um, and just ask them what were they doing and 
hearing again and again and again that like at some point you're just gonna have to you know go do the thing yeah um <laughs> the conversations thing, <laughs> that i've had with my mentors here mm-hmm. who both deal in youth play development a lot and so are also um you know aware of that that basic fact of of art making um and are able to kind of help me know that like i have support in them Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. i can continue my relationships with them when Mm -hmm. i leave here um and conversation that i had with our artistic director here who like very graciously made time for me and Mm -hmm. said yeah you know like the next thing to do is really take that plunge and here's some ways that you might go about doing that but Mm -hmm. it really depends on the person and so like just for me it's been about giving me that confidence um to go ahead I've had the best mentors in terms of my fellowship because, I mean, let's be real, going into (laughs) theater post-grad is scary sometimes. (laughs) Um, Often. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And I'm so, so grateful for my mentors that I've had, um, in particular the one that I have right now. She is such a powerful woman in the workplace, in the office, and I'm learning so much from her just about you know what it's like to take up space to speak up to know that my opinion is valued um that I should be you know able to say the things that I want to say at a meeting she challenges me to you know say at least one thing at a meeting no matter what meeting it is even if it is with a department head um even if it is just agreeing with something that they've said just to know that you know I have a voice and that it's okay for me to speak up And that has been, it seems so small, but it's really powerful for me to hear that. Um, I think as a woman, and especially as a woman of color, it can be very hard to break into the industry. Um, And so to have that kind of support and to know that, you know, I am backed up by these people who, you know, are powerful in their own ways Mm -hmm. um, in theater, that is so good for me to have. And I want, you know, that opportunity, that experience to be had by other you know, theater artists who are coming up and want to have a chance at these fellowships. Mm. Um, I had one more thing, but I can't remember what it is. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> it comes back to you. Yeah. You come back to it. Molly, how about you? I think the biggest um, thing for me that I'll take away from it is, like we maybe talked about earlier, a network. And not only a network of people, but also an understanding of how to build that network going forward. Um, and it is constantly accumulating and building. And so just having the ability and the the knowledge and the um, awareness that I have that knowledge to go forward and reach out to people and to make connections. Um, it's a pretty small world and it gets smaller every day and mm-hmm. it's incredible. And Tiana. Yes, similar to Molly, just a network. The theater world is small, (laughs) so just having um, a network of people that I could go out and say, hey, do you have work for me, or hey, I'm really interested in connecting with you or working with you in this way. Um, Also, just understanding how the machine works, just having that basic understanding, I think, goes a really long way, and that's something I think we're all fortunate to, regardless of our individual positions, we all have a better understanding of how the theater as a whole works, which I think is something specific to a fellowship that's really really incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree wholeheartedly with all that you all have said. Uh, just adding in my own little thing, just including the network, even the network amongst the fellows yeah. in my program. Like those are people who are in similar situations that I am, and I know that I can call on them to help me out with projects that I may have, or I can, you know, in the same way help them out. So the fellow connection, of course, the theaters connections, and just endowing my fellowship, endow me with the skills to be able to be a teaching artist now like Mm -hmm. I now have the skills to make curriculum and go out into schools and help teach students so it's yeah you you may not know what the next step is going to be but there are always those little skills that like I think we mentioned earlier that creep in you may not realize but you have them now to be in your back pocket to be like oh I can do this (laughs) I didn't know I could but hey guess what I'm here and I can do it so I want to thank the panel again Tiana thank you so much for taking the time out and joining us 
And of course, thank you guys so much. I enjoyed it. Yes, keep doing great things at Arena Stage. Molly, thank you for joining us. Thank you all. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Yes, keep being great out there in Hartford. <laughs> Lena, thank you for being here and sharing your time. And keep killing it over there at ACT <laughs> and Thanks Ankita. Girl, yeah. <laughs> Hold it down. Thank you for coming out. And viewers, thank you so much for watching and tuning in. I hope that you gained something influential from this. If you're interested in applying for a fellowship, at Berkeley Rep's applications are live. Mm -hmm. They'll be open until March 10th. You can visit Berkeley Rep's website. And if you're interested in ACT, Hartford Stage, Arena Stage, or any other regional theater that offers a fellowship, be sure to search, Google search. There's also a list on uh, Berkeley Rep's website with the information that you can check out. So yeah, please get out there, apply, shoot your opportunity. Thank you so much for joining in, and we'll catch you later.